This tutorial will guide you through how to create a scavenger hunt using Padlet. I am already logged into my Padlet account and I'm looking at my home page. I'm going to click on Create New Padlet. Before I begin adding any pads to my Padlet, I'm going to look over here on the right side and there's a menu that shows several things. This brings you back to your home page. This allows you to create a new wall. This is about your account settings. This section is share and export. We're going to come back to it towards the end of the tutorial. But this one down here at the bottom that says modify your wall is where you would need to start. So the first option is basic information. So I'm going to give my Padlet a title. Inventors and Inventions Scavenger Hunt. In the description is where you can give uh, further directions to your students. So, so this is the directions that I want to give to my students. I can then select a little um, icon to go along with my title. I'm just going to go and get this little pocket watch and you'll notice that there's my title and my directions for my students. Next I'm going to move to wallpaper. They have several different wallpapers in their gallery that you can choose from or you can select to add one of your own. If you choose to add your own wallpaper it needs to be of a large image size like a 1600 by 1200. So I'm going to click on add your own. If it is a small image size, what it'll do is tile your image instead of make it all as one. So I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to click to browse my computer. And it's on my desktop and it's right here called inventions. I'm going to do open. Gives me a little preview of what the wallpaper will look like. And then I will do submit. So now I have my wallpaper. Next is the layout option. Keep it at freeform because this allows you to move your pads around on your Padlet freely. Next is privacy. For this one you can keep it as a hidden link but this is the most important part right here. By default it is set to can write. That means that, your that anybody who views your Padlets could actually double click and post a comment. So for this particular activity you do need to change this to can view. That means they can view your Padlet only and click on the resources, but they won't actually be able to post a comment. So I'm going to do submit. And next is notifications. I do not need to put a check mark for this particular activity, but if I was using Padlet and I wanted my students to post comments, I could actually put a check mark here and Padlet would email me daily about who has posted a comment. Students do not need to have a Padlet account to post a comment. Uh, if they are posting a comment though and they do not have a Padlet account, they would need to put their name in their comment. That way you would know who's making that comment. If for some reason your students create a Padlet account, the name will automatically be by their comment. But again, students do not need to create a Padlet account to view your Padlets. It is shared with them through a URL. The next option is address. This is the URL that goes directly to the Padlet that I'm creating, but I could come and customize it. So instead of it having all these little crazy letters and numbers at the end, I want it to say inventions and I'm going to pick. And so now the URL to my Padlet has my name and the word inventions at the end. If I needed to remove a Padlet, I could go here and delete and remove the Padlet from my collection. But now I'm ready to begin. So I'm going to click on the little uh, sprocket wheel again. And now I'm back to my Padlet page. Now I've done some pre-work. So I'm going to bring up another browser. On this browser, I have different tabs of resources that I'm going to use for my Padlet. Before, I showed you how to tile your windows side by side. So I'm going to go and grab the top of this window and I'm going to drag it to the left side of my screen and it takes up the left side of my screen and then I'm going to do the same thing for my Padlet window. Now it's easy for me to work from my um, one browser to the next side by side. So I'm ready to begin with my first question. So I'm going to double click and my title I'm going to put the number, number one.
So here's my first question that I need them to do. They're going to find their answer at this site. So I'm going to go click up here, make a copy of that URL. And then I'm going to come down here to this little option, click. And I'm going to right click and paste the URL and add it. Now what Padlet does is it normally picks up a little image from that site. I can actually resize this little pad so I can pull in or I can even get on this little corner and resize it and then go and place it where I want it to be. So now I have my first question. I'm going to double click again and my second question. So there's my second question, and here's the site that I want to use for that. This is actually a discovery education video that I went and searched for. It is a little two-minute video about Thomas Edison, but in this video, it will give the students the answers to this question. Once again, to get the URL that will go directly to this video where students will not be required to log into Discovery Ed, when you are in this view, in the viewer window, you simply right-click, you go to Output, and this is the URL that will bring them directly to the Discovery Education video and will not require them to log in. So I'm going to make a copy of this URL. I'm going to come over here to my link. I'm going to paste it and add. Now it has a little player because this is a video. So again, I can resize this and place it where I want it to be. So now I'm ready for number three. So again, I'm going to double tap. And my number three question So who achieved the first successful powered flight and what year did it take place? Now for this one, I've gone to Google and I did a Google search for an image on the Wright brothers. Now notice this is just an image. It's, not, it's an image from a particular website. I want my students only to see this image and not the whole website. So I'm going to right click on this image. Now I am in Internet Explorer, so I'm going to go to Properties. And this is the URL that, brings my, that will bring my students directly to this image. Now, if you're using Chrome for an image, they give you the op option to copy the image URL when you right click. So now I'm going to click on my little link. I'm going to paste it and add it. And notice how it gives the little image there. So again, I'm going to resize my little pad. And I'm going to, I'm just clicking out and I'm placing it where I want it to be. I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to guide you through two more. For number four, we're going to use a World Book Online resource. So number four. So over here, I've gone to World Book Kids and I've searched Eli Whitney and I've got the exact article that I want my students to use. This URL will bring my students directly to this article to get the answers to this question. So again, I'm going to copy that URL, come over to my links, paste that URL, and add it. So because this is like um, a resource, it's not really picking up an image. Let me go back and, oops. So I'm just going to resize this. That's okay. This works just fine. And now for the last one, I'm actually going to upload a document. So I'm going to double click. This is going to be number five.
So I'm telling my students what I want them to do. So this time, instead of doing a link, I'm going to use this option, which is to upload a file. So I'm going to click. I'm going to click in this box to navigate on my computer because I have a, a document, that a PDF that says list of inventors, and I'm going to click on open. And I'm going to go ahead and maximize because that's the last example I'm going to show you. And now you can see I can still resize. Now at this time I could go and move my little pads anywhere that I want them to be on the page, how I want my students to view it. So now I have my little padlet finished. Now I did five examples. You will be required to do eight on your assignment. But what you're going to do next is you're going to go back to your settings. And if you go to the address, this is the URL that you're going to make a copy of. So I could just stretch over that, highlight it, right click and copy, and paste this URL into the discussion board into Blackboard to share your Padlet with your students. There will be some other information to include, like the title of your Padlet, your grade level, and what you expect to do with your Padlet. The final thing I wanted to show you is also on this menu bar, you've got this option, let me close this little sprocket, you've got this option that says share and export. Here are other ways that you can share and export the Padlet that you've created. You can export it as an image, a PDF, you can email it to someone, you can even print it out. It prints out very nicely and this would be an option for you to use for your students to record their answers on. You have an embed code, and you also have an automatically generated QR code. So these are just other options of ways that you can share your Padlet with your students and others. That concludes this video on creating your Padlet. Oh, before I close, let me just say one more thing. When I go back to home and I go to Padlets, this shows the list of the Padlets that I've created. So at any time I could go and I could edit these padlets. Anytime I edit it, it's automatically going to show on the viewer's end. That concludes the video of using Padlet.